But along these lines, with with I think about it a little bit differently now. Uh, I don't usually think this way. Um, with dominant chords, I think of three options. Okay, so basically, if I see a dominant chord, there's there's three options. So this first one, this mixolydian. <laughs> When I play this chord, I, I, the thing is, once you're playing in a scale, you can use those notes, you can use that scale very freely. So if I'm thinking about mixolydian, I can just, like right now, I'm just seeing. I'm just seeing those notes everywhere, and I can just pick it, I can just kind of press the pedal down, and that counts as C7. You know, here's the 13th, here's the 9th, here's the 3rd, whatever. So this is, Mixolydian is like, if you use these extensions, but you didn't alter, you didn't alter the 9th, 11th, or 13th at all. That's just... That to me all counts as C7. So that's one option for C7. Uh, this other option for C7 is called the altered scale. This is like this scale. minor, D flat melodic minor. So if I play, but the same thing, I'm going to think about D flat melodic minor across the whole piano and just kind of like pick notes. So, you know, this is a sharp nine, this is a flat nine, and that's a, that's a flat 13. You know, they're all in there, but I don't really think of it that way. I just think of it as this, this, you know that's that's uh, that's one way, and then this last one is, is diminished. So diminished is is like sort of a fake scale. I mean, it's not a, it's not a it's not a diatonic. It's not like a major scale. It has eight notes. two diminished chords but I can do the same thing with that scale I can see this scale and in the context of C7 that has a flat 9 a sharp 9 a sharp 11 and a natural 13 so the difference between altered and diminished is diminished has a natural 13 and altered has a flat 13 so this is diminished that's altered so okay uh and now if i was doing diminished i could do the same thing i can just kind of paint freely with that scale you know and there of course you know you're getting a 13th and a, and a flat nine and a, and a sharp nine that's a weird chord for C7, but you see it works because you can kind of do that. And you get to F7. So I, I tend to think more about the scale. I think about I'm, I'm very aware of the whole scale, um, and then I'm just kind of like painting with that scale hearing a melody and then harmonizing that melody with um, different notes in the scale that it's in. And then you end up playing your, your ninths and, and elevenths and thirteenths. Um, but you know what's interesting is that, okay listen to C7, just regular C7 mixolydian. And listen to C7 alter. You know, they're not the same chord at all. I mean, they're both called C7, but they're not the same chord. So it's kind of confusing. That's the issue with, with, with dominant chords, is that here's three sounds you can get from a dominant chord. And if you see C7, you could use any one of those equally. 
so you just have to get those in your ear and decide which one is right for the moment. And the one that's right for the moment is the one that supports the melody the best. So that's why you really got to know the melody. You can't really just look at a chord change and know what to do with the dominant chord because there's too much at stake, right? <laughs> you don't want to be playing this when the melody is like this. You know, if the melody is... You don't want to be playing this. But they're both C7. I mean, just we call it C7. Who knows how this nomenclature developed? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, of course, they're both C7 and that they're both dominant chords. They both go 5 1. Um, but the compulsion to alter the dominant chord is from this. I'll talk about this too. If I play C mixolydian and then F. The trouble is that's actually the same scale. So there's n there ends up not being a lot of movement. If I play C7, on one hand, it's not a lot of movement because it's both the same scale. So that's why we're usually compelled to play. scale so that was here's mixolydian and here's the altered scale and that and the compulsion to use the sharp 11 is to differentiate between so i know i'm going a little bit a little bit quickly but but this is how I think about this stuff. So I, I, I think that that explains the, the, the compulsion to, to alter, to, to add an alteration. That's, that's where it comes from. Because if you want the five chord to feel different from the one chord, you have to go to a different place. Um, so that's why... <laughs> sharp 11 on the on the one chord differenti differentiates this um, but knowing the tension yeah the, the the numbers 9 and 11 and 13 are not just arbitrary numbers when you do 1 3 5 9 11 9 11 13 that if you put it together makes a seven note scale um, and then each time if you change one of those ninth eleventh or thirteenths um, it's going to change the makeup of that seven note scale so that's why you have to do it carefully and it's dominant chords that have the most trouble but also the most um, kind of potential for fun but they also have the most responsibility so um, yeah, I'm sure that other, uh, maybe, th th this way of, of, of learning about uh, alterations and available tensions is a pretty common, like, jazz piano thing that people learn. I'm sure that maybe some of you have seen that before. But for me, it's, it's much easier now as, like, a hack. If I just, if I just think about, if I really know this scale up and down... If I really know that scale up and down, then I can just, yeah, I would encourage you all to do it, you know, hit, hit a low C and hit the pedal down, and then just play notes in the D flat melodic minor scale. It's great. Now, play a low C, hit the pedal down, play notes in the C mixolydian scale. It's all good. Now play notes in the diminished scale. It's all good. Talking about it, that could be an intro. Here's an intro to Star Cross Lovers. I'm going to play A flat seven. Mm -hmm. 